What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here. Yet another embarrassing, embarrassing defeat for Tottenham Hotspur. This time against Brighton, we have lost 3-0 at the Amex. Um, we've decided not to do a play ratings again, just because every single player, no one gets above a two or a three. And it's just demoralizing to do, to be honest. And where do we go? Where, where, where do we start from? As in this was a team effort of shit. Let's, yeah. be, let's be really honest. We thought it couldn't get any worse on Tuesday after falling apart at Bayern Munich. We were wrong because it did get worse and it got far worse against Brighton. We were, we were, the scoreline flattered us 3 0. Let's, let's, no, can't be around half the Half time should have been 4 5 0. Second half, they could have had a few more goals as well. I remember telling you at 2 0 in the second half, I was like, they're going to get another goal. It was so easy for them for the majority of the game. We just didn't have any fight in us at all off the ball. It was like they, they just dominated. It's not they, like they dominated the ball and found it, hard for, find it, found it hard to break us down or anything like that. It was just they had the ball and they were just passing it around like we were a lower division side. And they just found it easy to open, open, up, open us up. And we had nothing about us to try and stop it. And when we got the ball, all we did was hump, hoof it long. Like we, were, like we had no technical ability about us. Like that's the best we could offer. It seemed like it was like Stoke against Barcelona. You know what I mean? Like they were passing it around us like we weren't even there. It's like there was no effort at all on that pitch. And it just stinks of players throwing potch under the bus to me. I don't know about you. We'll get into that, but in terms of how the game, in terms of how the game went, obviously, it literally, the the players come out two minutes into the game. You're thinking, all right, we've just lost seven two to Bayern Munich. The the big questions were asked were are the are the players together? Is you know after the unity we showed against Southampton that completely fell apart against Bayern. And you're thinking, all right, let's have a reaction in this game. That's what Pochettino sides are good at. They're good at reacting to defeats. They're good at um, you know trying to change it up. And we did change it up in terms of. Everyone was calling for Eric Dyer to come back in. Eric yeah. Dyer came back into Formation. the field. Formation, is done about the second half, but the first half we definitely played 4-2-3-1, which everyone was calling for. No more of that diamond. And then within two minutes, we've already chucked the ball in our own net. Yeah, so literally another Hugo Lloris mistake. Uh, he goes down with probably one of the most horrific injuries we've seen on a football pitch. Uh, dislocated. Thank God it's only dislocation, yeah, exactly. by the way, which is great his, news. Uh, dislocated his elbow, which means he's going to be out for two months minimum. Um, but at least it's not a break, so we obviously we wish him a speedy recovery. Yeah, um, but, and it was um, it looked a lot worse than uh, originally because it looked like he definitely had snapped. Yeah, but, well, yeah dislocation is probably one of the most painful things. I've never actually had one, but uh, I've heard that literally they're even more painful than a break. You could, um, yeah, you could, you feel, and also you just when you're. We're right behind the goal, so we could literally hear Hugo screaming um, just uh, while, while just after the goal went in, and it was I felt so bad for him, I really did. I, you know, even when like even in that moment, I know we we went one nil down and everything, but you can even see in the vlog we didn't even obviously we were very frustrated when one nil down. Nah, but at that point, when we saw Hugo screaming like that, it doesn't matter that we were one nil yeah, down. Yeah, I, I didn't even like I didn't even matter to me I just wanted to ho I was just hoping Hugo was going to be all right but the reaction to that from the team I understand it's going to affect the team having you know your captain golf injured like that but I think the way we fell apart is just unacceptable I'm sorry we should we should have we should this would, would have been a great opportunity for the team after that again everything coming up against us something bad happening to get it together you think they'll show all, some leadership exactly you think they'll all come together and put on um, pull one through for the captain you know he's just gone off with the most horrific injury and then they fall apart even more so than they did before you know and Hugo goes off injured, Gazaniga comes on. Saying that, Hugo, yeah, it, despite the injury, which is horrific and we wish him all the best, he should have, I don't know what he was doing. Terrible mistake, but then, don't know what he, was then doing. he goes off injured, Gazaniga comes on, and it's the same story all over again. Another mistake from another keeper, yeah. and we're 2-0 down without even blinking. But you, there, there's these clips circling around on social media you saw with um, the ball that went in that Hugo Lloris made the mistake. Uh, Lamella just walking around, so unlike someone like Lamella to be just walking around, not, not, no intensity in his pressing, just letting the cross come in, no worries about it. And obviously, he, obviously it's not his fault that Hugo made the mistake, but what was he doing for, for, for those moments? And again, it was just symptomatic of our whole performance. We were just walking around, no intensity, no willingness to chase after the ball. And I don't know whether they're just they're just tired of the the pressing tactics, or they have no desire, or I don't know what's going on at the moment because they're just when you're off the ball. We used to be like a pack of wild what's called animals, wolves. didn't we? A pack of wolves together hunting in packs to get the ball. It's gone. It's absolutely gone from this team. It's I don't know where it's gone, but then they're not. They're just not doing it anymore. 
and again the second goal so, so easy Every, everyone was just letting Brighton have the ball letting them have possession letting them build their attack no no try to disrupt disrupt their attack at all just allowing them to play their football and yes Gazaniga made a mistake but I think the whole team also have to take responsibility for that every who was single, following up the listen, defense every single player needs to take responsibility none of them are taking responsibility for anything at the moment they're playing like a bunch of bottle jobs that have no character no heart None of them playing for the badge. It's an absolute disgrace at the moment. And you know, who, uh, to Toby and Yan, two centre backs. Where the fo where's the following up of the rebound? They're just letting Connolly have it. And what hurt me a lot is like it's the first time I've seen Toby and give up pretty much. And, it, and it's really hard to take because you know, people have been talking about Toby not being committed for Spurs for a while, but you've never seen him not be committed on the pitch. And this against Brighton was the first time I've seen him give up, and that it's just. It's not on. It's really not on and from when, all of them. And when they get the ball right, and we was, we're usually very good at you know having uh, controlling games, having possession, passing, passing and moving, and trying to pick the lock of the defence. But it's like it's almost as if the, how we performed in possession was just as bad, was just as um, was just as symptomatic as how we performed our possession because our possession we can all talk about how there was no pressing, there was no fight to get off the ball, but in possession as well, you know, players. It takes effort to try and move your body in a position where you can collect the ball moving into space, not just being lethargic and just standing yeah. around and hoping for the ball to come to you. That also takes effort, and that sometimes can be can go amiss when you're talking about a <coughs> lack of effort. But every time we got the ball, we just lumped it, lumped it forward every time. And if we weren't time. lumping it, it was Undombele or Eric Dyer losing the ball. Correct. Both of them were absolutely shocking on the ball. Ab terrible. Eric Dyer. The amount of times he either just played blind passes, or even when he looked up, he just found somehow found a Brighton player as if he was playing for Brighton. He probably had like a hundred percent passing record for Brighton. It was unbelievable. It's absolutely shocking. Whenever we whenever we passed it short into midfield, Dumbele or Dyer would lose it, and then we, we wouldn't try and uh, try and play away our trouble. We'd just try and knock it long, and that's just a lazy thing to do. Especially when, you know trying to get Harry Kane to do all the work to try and win the knockdowns and try and win the second balls. It just wasn't going to happen, especially against a, a you know two decent defenders that like, you know dunk and I don't know if Duffy was playing but the other defender Burns he's a big unit for Brighton they're not going to be it's not going to be so easy to win every uh, header against these players so it's just a, so lazy on the off, on the ball as well and that's why that contributed to us creating absolutely zero chances throughout the game pretty much <laughs>